podcast. Welcome to Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. I'm your host, Spencer Newarth, and today we're joined by Brody, Giannis, Randall, Hillary, Corey, Tressa, Seth, and Marge. This is a 10-round quiz show with questions from Meat Eater's four verticals, which are hunting, fishing, conservation, and cooking. And there is a prize. Meat Eater will donate $500 to the conservation organization of the winner's choosing. And for the stat of the week this week, we're looking at total games played. Brody has been on the most episodes of Meat Eater Trivia with 67 appearances. That's followed by Yanni at 53, Steve at 52, Seth at 42, Corinne at 39, Chester at 34, and Randall and Cal at 31. Brody, 67 appearances. How does it feel to be the Feels like I'm closing in on retirement. Oh, really? <laughs> but then I'll come so. back for a mm. couple more. Like, oh, you know, sure. Jordan. You, you announce your retirement <laughs> just, to, just to build up a bunch of yeah. hype, and then you'll yeah. do a retirement yeah. tour. You'll take a month Retire off and then come week. back. <laughs> oh, you do yeah. the Dwayne Wade, and you just change jerseys with everybody, go around the country, you know. Yeah. Just... yeah. 67 appearances mm. by Brody. What was mine? Uh, Seth is at 42. You're the Four third three. most common guest oh. on Media wow. Trivia. I wish, I wish my winnings, like, <laughs> cor- cor- Here's our new that. segment, IFAQs. If you have a question for our crew related to Meat Eater Trivia, you can send it to trivia at themeateater.com with the subject line IFAQ. Claudia Wallace wants to know, why doesn't the silence killer play more trivia? I'm not complaining. I'm just wondering if he's scared to play or if everyone else is scared to play with him. Uh, now, the silence killer is Steve. And, and uh, you probably know this, but he hosts a little TV show and podcast that has him traveling a lot um, and doing those things. He's also a very important part in this company that, um, you know, has a lot of responsibilities here. Steve is a hard man to get as a guest on this show. Uh, I do my best. I'm always checking his schedule. Sometimes it doesn't work out. And as you heard, he has made 52 appearances uh, right behind Yanni. So and that's go. out of a possible, I don't know, uh, 80 Something like that. Well, I think this we're in the '90s for trivia okay. episodes. I think our, our your hundredth episode is going to be in two oh, wow. weeks. Woo. Thank you for the warning. This might yeah. be 100. If this is actually 100, wow. we blew it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we've done something much more thoughtful. <laughs> we'll, we'll reschedule. Uh-huh, that's right. We'll shuffle this one back, so this will be like 101. And then that'll be incredibly confusing for listeners. Sure. <laughs> Uh, Now we have some housekeeping to get to. In a previous game of trivia, we talked about how the trivia community refers to the provided tidbit after each question as flavor text. But many of our players and listeners protested this term, and some even offered alternatives. Here are a few suggestions we got from listeners for words and phrases we can use to replace flavor text. I'll read these off. You guys uh, will take your temperature afterwards, see what you think of them. How about this one? Trivia treats. No. Like it? Boo. No. Okay. Wow. Boo. <clears throat> Thumbs down. Uh, hated it. Uh, how about Spencer Snacks? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Even emphatically. If you uh, were actually bringing snacks. Mm. Is that your suggestion? <laughs> it was not my suggestion. I think that was a YouTube commenter. It's kind of uh, like a Scooby Snack. Oh, I might have suggested that actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> here, here we got one. We got to find Randall's alt uh-huh. on YouTube. Spencer's seasonings or the seasonings? No. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, gristle. How about that one? No. no. What? It's all like food related, jokey shit like that? Or I like... mean, what what would you like it to be, Brody? I'm, I'm just asking. I was happy they... with the original yeah. factoid. The, the tidbit. Here's the last one the fat. Mm. I like that mm. one. That's better. It's I like, like chewing the yeah, fat. Yeah, it gives you something. I was leaning towards like, informational to sentences, <laughs> but I like the fat. <laughs> and the fat, you like, uh, don't, isn't this saying like you chew the fat? Yeah. Right? yeah. 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 The fat, yeah. we like trim it off from the other. So maybe the fat. I still prefer flavor text, though. But you guys like the fat better or You kind of won text? me over with flavor text considering what we just had to listen to. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> Interchangeable. It could be either one. Flavor text I think or we play around fat. with it. Okay. Just see what feels right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. If you have any more suggestions, uh, put in the YouTube comments. Write us at trivia at TheMeatEater.com. Now, the Shelby Index for today's round is a four, so our winners should get eight correct answers. And with that, we're on to the game of trivia. Play the drop, Phil. Look, I need to know what I stand to win. Everything. How's that? You just tend to win everything. Game on, suckers! 
Question one, the topic is hunting, and this will be multiple choice. Which of these states has the latest opener for deer season? Is it Illinois, North Dakota, Idaho, or Florida? Which of these states has the latest opener for deer season? Is it Illinois, North Dakota, I have so many questions. Idaho, so many or questions. Florida? What, what are your questions? Are we talking gun season? Archery uh, well, in, in a lot of states. to in, kill a deer? Yes. Gotcha. There you go. This isn't weapon specific. Mm. Which of these states has the latest opener for deer season? Illinois, North Dakota, Idaho, or Florida? This is not a trick question. It's not like um, if if Maryland was a choice and Baltimore had some very unique urban season where you can kill deer 12 months out of the year. It's nothing like that. There's no trickery going on here. Which of these states has the latest opener for deer season? Illinois, North Dakota, Idaho, Florida. Brody, how do you feel about your answer? I don't feel any way about it right now. Yanni, have you hunted in any of these states? No. <laughs> Illinois, North Dakota, Idaho, Florida. Only Idaho. Was that for, for deer? deer? For deer, for okay. deer, I have. I've hunted in Florida for turkeys. Never, never even been to North Dakota. I don't think. What? Goodness, you live in a state bordering it now. I know. What do you got against them? Nothing. <laughs> I might actually drive through there this spring break. My girls and okay. I are doing a little spring break tour Where to, are we the, going? to the Midwest. My mother's Classic turning 75. Mm. Can I come? Uh, Yeah, yeah. Jennifer's staying home for the oh. first part, so I have ac one extra spot in the truck. I was telling Yanni about a trip upcoming, and he said, well, can I come? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> so now I thought I'd get even here and put him on the spot, uh, but he just invited me along. Yeah, we're going to go squirrel hunt in mm. uh, on our little place in Wisconsin. Are you going to do any turkey hunt, or is it not that time frame? Not uh, too, a little too early still. Gotcha. Does Wisconsin everybody have an answer? Long Long squirrel season? Uh, no, but as a landowner. Oh, you, know, mm. like get, you get landowner around. tags? King Yanni. <laughs> <Squirrels>. Landowner <laughs> squirrel tag. <laughs> Gonna bring his helicopter. Is everybody ready? Maggie? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying Idaho. Corey saying Florida. Tressa saying Nodak. Randall saying Florida. Marge saying Illinois. She drew a little deer. Uh, Yanni saying Florida. <laughs> Hillary saying Florida, Brody saying Florida. The correct answer is Illinois. Only Marge got it right. Mm. Nice, Marge. In 2023, some Florida deer seasons mm. opened on July 29th. Some Idaho deer seasons opened on August 15th. North Dakota opened September 1st. And Illinois opened on October 1st. Illinois has one of the latest deer openers in the country. So a lot of you went with the opposite, went with Florida, which actually has, I think, the earliest opener in the country. Would you have known that? Um, mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know any of think, the names. I, I think I would have one. known that one. Huh. Um, well, I, 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 to be fair, I, I lived in Illinois it. for a year. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So I was aware that they had I a lived there for three opener. years. But Did you hunt deer when you were there? No, I lived on the south side of Chicago. Question two, the topic is fishing. This next great question comes another, to us another via fun John Randall Paul tidbit. Just, that's, a, <laughs> that's how you know uh, Spencer does not care. Tell us about living on the south no, side of Chicago, I think we're Randall. All, we're all ready for is question number two. Is that where you two. developed your, your no, love you just, for hot dogs? You could have just been like, uh, oh, <laughs> neat. Cool. Huh. Oh, yeah, did you go to a White Sox I was just game. trying to explain why. I didn't, uh -huh. how, how far from there? the White Sox stadium did you live, Randall? Because they're, they're in the two, south side, Two right? stops on the red line, yeah. So Sox okay. 35th was the stop. Uh -huh. Did you so ever at, go? Oh, yeah. They won the series the, my, my first uh -huh. year there. So What, what was like? Uh, what was your go-to food at the stadium? Hot we dogs. don't have to go through this charade. <laughs> hot, <laughs> hot, it's not, it's not, not a dog. charade. Now I'm you interested. clearly weren't interested, and now you're just putting me on the spot. Question making me two. reveal all sorts of personal Question information. Question two. The topic is fishing. What was your relationship status while you were there? It's very single. <laughs> Okay, that's a, that's a now I feel alone like we learned miserable. Everything. <laughs> question two: The Deeply topic depressed. is fishing. This next great question comes to us via John Calvello. The USGS defines this nine-letter word as quote the measure of relative clarity of water. 
God, I hate these letter nine letter ones. The USGS defines this nine letter word as, quote, the measure of relative clarity of water. Brody looks confident. Yanni looks confident. Yanni, you know this one. I believe so. You ever throw this word around just for funsies? Yeah. Okay. Brody, you know this one too? Pretty sure. Or I got, it's a big coincidence. You mean <laughs> in the same way that uh, Ranella likes to throw fecundity there around? You go. Mm -hmm. The USGS defines this nine letter word as the measure of relative clarity of water. Do you think Seth should know this one, Brody? Um, I think I if, probably do know it. it. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where it'll be like, God okay. damn it. Yeah. Somehow I feel like we learned about this working together in back in Vail. Oh, uh, wow. I feel like we even learned how they measured it. Oh. I think I can it's tell like the you, watershed council or something. Uh, I yeah. don't know. Okay. But I don't know what they would have been checking the. <clears throat> Clarity on. Did you use a secchi disc? Oh, very good, Maggie. Oh, I didn't know there uh, was there's, there's a, a hint. secchi disc. How did, but how did I didn't you know that it was oh, a disc? You went to school for biology, right? Mm -hmm. Did you ever measure this um, using yes, the Yes, in Minnesota disc? at the school where I went, we had a mm -hmm. whole limnology course. Very good. To take, it's, so. uh, oh. it's a thing that's about the size of a pie plate that's black and white. You lower it in the water. And when it disappears, that's how you measure. It's basically a, a white secchi? dinner plate. Mm -hmm. Secchi? Is that the I think word? it's named after the the in person who invented it. Sure. It's like S e c c h i something. If, like if that. the flavor text is a Spencer snack, and that was a Maggie morsel. <laughs> okay. <Ooh>. Very good. <laughs> Does like everybody that. have an answer? Cute, cute Phil. Masterfully Phil, done, Phil. Phil. Masterfully done. <laughs> Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth without an answer. <laughs> Corey saying murkiness. Tress is saying purified. Yeah. Randall saying turbidity. Marge saying turbidity. She drew a nice little walleye. Yanni <laughs> saying turbidity. Hillary without an answer. Brody saying turbidity. That's the correct answer. Turbidity. Oh, not the more turbid water is, the <laughs> less visibility it has. Things that can affect turbidity include the presence of clay, silt, algae, and plankton, and how much the water is moving. To <clears throat> for help with selecting lure based on the water clarity, read Joe Cermelli's article on TheMeatEater.com called How to Choose the Perfect Fishing Lure Color. Me and Giannis had many a guiding day ruined by water turbidity. Was, there you go. Now, it was what you were thinking of how to measure it, the sucky disc that uh, Maggie was referencing. Yes. There you go. Now I think they have uh, more precise ways that they dip a pole down. It measures like 10 things for you as mm. well as turbidity. Question three. The topic is woodsmanship. The USDA divides oak trees into these two major groups. The USDA divi divides oak trees into these two major groups. In our last game, which took place about 40 minutes ago, Yanni was talking about oak trees. I was worried that he was just going to throw this answer out there, but he never approached it. The USDA divides oak trees into these two major groups. Oh, that's another one I should know. Randall, do you have this one right? No, no, it's just a guess. Okay. I won't know this. Seth. Our lumberjack in the room. I'm regretting come up with an answer yet. <laughs> I'm regretting telling you that I could be here for this one. <laughs> the USDA divides oak trees into these two major groups. Yanni is losing the sweatshirt. Is that gonna help you out, Yanni? What? Is that gonna help you out ditching the sweatshirt? Uh, it's gonna help me feel more comfortable. Okay. Does this yes. mean that some oak trees are part of, like, depending? St <laughs> that there not going to give you any hints, Hillary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the USDA divides oak trees into these two major groups. That is a quote from their website. They say, oak trees are divided into these two major groups. Is everybody ready? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Brody, how we doing over here? Sounds like that Eagles uh, uh, quarterback, I, right? <laughs> Ooh. You, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I, I watched it on mute. Oh, sorry. Who but was? I could imagine so a man making out. a noise I don't, like I don't that know if it's hit. him or somebody on the line, but I watched another football game. I'm like, I didn't hear that sound. But every time 
They hmm. snap. It's actually after the snap, you just hear this like almost moose like grunting. Oh. <laughs> Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have <laughs> Seth saying red oak, white oh. oak. Corey yeah. saying white, black. <laughs> Tressa saying white, orange. Randall saying white, red. Marge saying Savannah and Woodland. <laughs> she drew us a nice uh, oak leaf and acorn. Yanni saying Upland and Swamp. Hillary without an answer. Brody saying Pin and Scrub. He crossed out red and white. The correct answer is white and red. Oh, I think we had Randall oh. and Seth get it right. Brody Treeman. crossed it Thank out. Thank God, Treeman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Acorns from red oaks have more fat and calories, but acorns from white oaks taste better. One way to tell the difference between the two is by looking at the leaves. White oaks have rounded lobes and red oaks have pointed lobes. A way to remember this is that pointed leaves could poke you and draw red blood. Therefore, they're from a red oak. Hmm. Question four, hmm. the topic is gear. This is our listener question of the week, which was won by Brian Keeley for sending this great question. Brian is going to get a board game signed by the crew. If you want a chance to win our listener question of the week, then send your question to trivia at TheMeatEater.com. Name one of the three states with the most snowmobile registrations. The topic is gear. Name one of the three states with the most snowmobile registrations. Very confident, Seth. Yanni looks confident. Randall looks confident. Randall, you got this one right? I think so. I'll be surprised. I'll be surprised if I have it wrong. Name one of the three states with the most snowmobile registrations. I just drove a snowmobile over 200 miles in the last couple days. You think that's going to help you on this one? It better. Tell folks about the weather on that one, Corey. Um, it was negative uh, 48 the day we went in. We drove uh, 55 miles, about 30 miles an hour. I got to figure out what the wind chill would have been. But it was cold. So it was negative 48 before wind chill. Yeah, that was with the thermometer. Good in. Lord. Yeah. You felt you felt Tell something me. that probably uh, few people would ever experience. Now you're you're that. a father, right? <laughs> yes, that's right. Very responsible. We had some good gear, though. <laughs> a lot of good. Trust the gear. Gear uh, is working. Only joking. I don't draws. question here. Name I'm one here. of the three <laughs> states with the most snowmobile registrations. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying Utah. Corey saying North Dakota. Tressa saying Idaho. Randall saying Minnesota. Marge saying Minnesota, her home state, and she drew the state. Yanni saying Michigan, Hillary nice saying Idaho, Brody saying Minnesota. Yeah. The three states are Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Michigan. I think about half the room got really? that one right. Oh, cool. There are about 1.2 million <laughs> registered snowmobiles in America, with half of them coming from those three states. There are 230,000 registered snowmobiles in Wisconsin, 200,000 in Minnesota, 170,000 in Michigan, 105,000 in New York, 85,000 in Maine, and 67,000 in Alaska. Those are your states with the most You used to be able to ride a snowmobile to my high school. They had snowmobile parking in the back because you could cut across the lake so much quicker oh, to get to school. Yeah. What so, would stop you from doing it now? I never, my parents, we didn't own one. So, okay. but then the school banned them. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Because people over lunch campus. were, you know, doing what they do. Brapping? The kids. Brap. Yeah. Brap, 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 brap. <laughs> Phil, we are halfway through the game of trivia. Uh, I don't, oh, no, I we're not. We're I'm sorry. Yeah. This is question five. The topic oh. is cooking. I was just, just testing Phil. He passed. <laughs> you got to go somewhere, job, Spencer. What is the Polish word for sausage? Oh, my gosh. The topic is cooking. Jesus. What is the Polish word for sausage? Brody thinks he has this one right. Mm. Can I get it somewhat close? Brody, are you Polish? You know what? I got a lot of Polish in me. My Do you? mom. Like, how much do you think? Well, my mom's parents, my grandparents, were like full 100%, mm. one generation removed from okay. Ellis Island. Pressure's on. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I have, but didn't spell it like that. <laughs> what is the Polish word for sausage? 
Randall, do you have this one? Uh, possibly. Okay. Possibly. My dad used to call my my mom's uh, parents a word you can't call. It. It's not like appropriate <laughs> to use anymore. Uh huh. One of my earliest memories of watching ESPN uh, was one like sports commentator calling another one that word as a joke, really? and huh. then and then they came back from commercial and that guy apologized for saying that on air. I was like, oh, I didn't, even, you know, it would just, like it washed right over me. And or, then when he had to apologize, I was like, oh, that's a that's a word, huh? We're talking about Afterwards, the word that can sounds you tell like me a, this? a whitefish. <laughs> like a whitefish? Uh, yes. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying uh-huh. kielbasa. Corey saying kielbasa. Mm. Tressa saying kielbasa. <laughs> Randall saying kielbasa. <laughs> Marge saying Frank. Giannis <laughs> saying kielbasa. Hillary and Brody saying kielbasa. They got it. The correct answer is kielbasa. If you want to know how to spell that, it's K-I-E-L-B-A-S-A. Yeah. Although there are many types of Polish sausage, much of the world just thinks of it as a mild pork sausage when they hear the word kielbasa. If you want to learn how to make it with wild game, then check out Wade Trung's article on TheMeatEater.com called Venison Kielbasa Recipe. He said he's used the same recipe with beaver, raccoon, and waterfowl. I feel like a lot of people say Polish kielbasa, and it's like redundant. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was the word for sausage or if it was a specialty sausage. I, I, was... I think if you go to the store and buy the Hillshire Farms, which is like probably the most common right. Polish kielbasa, it is marked as such. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. You're just going to take a Sharpie and, and uh, do some work for them. Cross out one of the words. Phil, we're well, halfway no, through. No, because... <laughs> I don't not so fast, it's Spencer. Not, it's not redundant. You're <laughs> it, saying Polish sausage, but the word sausage is in in right. Polish. You're right. Okay, <laughs> but you, so why would you cross anything? You're out? saying it's Polish kielbasa is what it says. Yeah, it's like saying sausage sausage. No, no, no. Like I'm sorry. Polish you're you're right. Sausage. Polish He's Polish right. sausage. Polish yeah. sausage. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Phil, <laughs> we're halfway through the game of trivia. Give us a scoreboard update. Tressa, Hillary, and Corey all have one point. Seth has two points. Brody, Giannis, and Maggie have three points apiece. And in first place is Randall Williams with four points. Son of a bitch. Mm. Mm. Question six. The topic <laughs> is hunting. <laughs> what company claims, quote, the bolt action rifle was forever changed? when they introduced the X-Bolt in 2008. What company claims the bolt-action rifle was forever changed when they introduced the X-Bolt in 2008? Confident Seth and Randall and Brody. I like the gun questions. Yanni, you know this one? Yes, sir. Corey, do you know this one? I believe so, yes. What company claims the bolt action rifle was forever changed when they introduced the X Bolt in 2008? Never owned one. How about you, Randall, Mr. Uh, Gun Trader? Yes, I uh, briefly owned a uh, an X Bolt long range in 6.5 Creedmoor uh, for a few months. Shot great. Shot the uh, Barnes Factory 127 LRX uh, very well. Set great, it down the road. It's a great okay. projectile. Sent it down the road. Lawrence. Sold it to a guy in Virginia, I think. Mm. Sent trap. it down the road just because you like to trade firearms, or yes, yeah, it's sort of a. It's like a side business if businesses lost money. <laughs> <laughs> you do, well, some people just call that a hobby, Randall. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth and Corey saying Browning, Tressa saying Reddington, Randall saying Browning. Marge without an answer, Yanni saying Browning, Hillary saying Smith and Wesson, Brody saying Browning. The correct answer is Browning. The rifle got its name from the pattern formed by the eight screws that fasten scope mounts to the receiver. Browning calls it the X-lock mounting system because when viewed from above, the screws positioned at the four corners of each base create an X. Question seven, the topic is fishing. What's the electronic piece of equipment that removes water from the bottom of a boat's hull? The topic is fishing. What's the electronic piece of equipment that removes water from the bottom of a boat's hull? 
Seth was quick to answer. Seth, have you ever had a close call where this thing saved you? Oh, yeah. One time put my boat in, didn't put the plug in. Uh, same same exact <laughs> thing happened to me. I'd imagine everyone has a story like that where they realize at some point uh, there's no plug. Yep. And then you're like, uh, you gun the boat trying to dump water out the back, running this thing. I one time, the different incident, I one time backed my boat. It was very early in the spring and all the reservoirs down here or in Montana are usually pretty low. I backed my boat in, realized that it was like too shallow to launch my boat, mm -hmm. but it was deep enough to where water can come in my plug because okay. I, again, Ooh. forgot to put it in. <laughs> and I, I like get out and go to look and I look in my boat and it's just full of water. Mm. And yeah, it was, just, it was just another incident. Did where, you fish that day? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I ended up having to back like most of my, well, my entire vehicle way back in the water. Mm. Just, yeah, it was. I was once at the fish shack and was taking the boat back and it had been raining hard, hard. Mm. And so, and it was getting real full and I was the one going to put it out on the float. I figured, well, I'll just pull the plug and run this, run the water out of here, yep, you know? Yep. Mm. So I pull it and I'm just, <laughs> and the boat's kind of slowing down and uh -oh. the, the bow starts to lift up a little bit. And I'm like, who else is in the boat? Just me. Oh. Good. And uh, <laughs> it's like the bow's going up, going up. And I'm like, man, I must have some weird trim thing going on, you know? So I'm trying to like adjust the trim. And then I finally notice that we're slowing down and there's getting to be more water. And I'm just, I, I can't, I don't know what to do. And I'm basically spinning donuts out in the middle of the mm. cove, full blast, freaking out. <laughs> and finally it came to me, just stop and put the plug back in, you know? But at this point, the water is so deep, I can't see the plug. Cause of course I just pulled it and oh. just dropped it into the bottom of the boat. Mm. And so but I still had to do that. And when I, yeah, it's one of those few times in my life where when that plug finally went back in and the boat came back to level and I was just <laughs> sitting there not sinking, um, I was very, very relieved. <laughs> Here very. you are today. Wishing you'd have had a, one of these things in that boat. Did you tell Steve about it? Oh, yeah. What did he I, say? What's surprising is I was out in front of, you know, <laughs> many buildings yeah, no one... where a lot of people, nobody saw it go down. I could have just oh. sunk the boat and would have been swimming so, wow. for sure. Oh, wait, so that yeah, you I'm, didn't have one of these electronic pieces of equipment no, in that no, boat? No, no, these boats don't oh. come with that. Okay. Is no. everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying bilge pump, Corey saying bilge pump, Tressa saying boat pump, Randall saying bilge pump, Marge saying bilge pump. She drew us uh, some water. <laughs> Yanni saying <laughs> bilge boat. pump. Hillary without an answer. Brody saying bilge pump. The correct answer is bilge pump. It's believed that the Romans invented the first bilge pump, which was a hydraulic system made of bronze. The Romans used this same technology for their urban water supply, hydraulic mining, irrigation, firefighting, and fish tanks. Question fish eight. Tanks. The topic is gear. This bird, which shares its name with a backpack company, is sometimes referred to as a fish hawk. Very confident room. This may be a 100 percenter. Made this one too easy. Um, yeah, you're just not making Randall sweat over there, man. Mm. His face is not. Oh, I've been sweating for about red. an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Does everybody have this one right? You think? Must be that furnace quarter zip. It is. Mm. Good insulation piece. <laughs> or that muskox that you're leaning against. Yeah, it does. I think it does give off. It radiates a bit of heat. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. Uh, we have every single person saying Osprey, and Marge even drew us one. The correct answer is Osprey. Osprey was founded in 1974 in California, but relocated to Colorado in 1990. At one point, 90% of its workforce was made up of members of the Navajo Nation. The brand got worldwide attention in 2001 when its backpack was shown on a Time magazine cover featuring the first blind climber to summit Mount Everest. Question 9. The topic is public lands. This next great question comes to us via Smith Andrews. Mount Mitchell, Lake Norman, and Cape Hatteras National Seashore are all located in this state. The topic is public lands. Mount Mitchell, Lake Norman, and Cape Hatteras National Seashore are all located in this state. We have a confident Randall and Brody. 
You boys know this one with certainty. No guessing on their end. Yanni, do you know this one? Pretty sure. Marge, do you know this one? Yes. Okay, What do you, are, are you drawing us the state? Are you drawing us a mountain? I don't think oh. I can draw the state. There's okay, well, clue. there's a little hint. <laughs> I, can, I can guess <laughs> what I can couldn't. guess. It's the only thing you haven't been able to draw today. <laughs> uh, I tried the snowmobile, I had raced. <laughs> <laughs> I can guess what Probably Marge not drawing. Wyoming. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> Mount Mitchell, Lake Norman, and Cape Hatteras National Seashore. Seth has yet to come up with an answer. Mm. Your other hint is that Hillary doesn't think she could draw this state. Cor- or, I'm sorry, Maggie doesn't think she can draw this state. Hillary, could you draw this state? I'm now second guessing my <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Corey, do you have an answer? I do. Tress, do you have an answer? Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying North Carolina. Corey saying New Hampshire. Tressa saying Maine, Randall saying North Carolina, Marge saying North Carolina. She drew us a lighthouse. Oh. Yanni saying North Carolina, Hillary saying Massachusetts, Brody saying North Carolina. They got it. The correct answer is North Carolina. Mount Mitchell is the highest peak east of the Mississippi River. Lake Norman has hosted some of the nation's biggest bass fishing tournaments, and Cape Hatteras National Seashore was the first national seashore in the country. Now, Randall and Brody, which one of those three things uh, gave you the answer that it was North Carolina, or did you know them all belonged there? I mean, Hatteras is the answer. Mm-hmm. Mount Mitchell and Lake Norman. Oh, those were the two that gave it to well, you. Well, I also knew Hatteras as well. Oh, but, okay, so all uh, three. My cousin has a place on Lake Norman, and I've been to Mount Mitchell. Cool. Do you want to talk about that more? No, I'm done sharing <laughs> uh, personal information today. Phil, uh, <laughs> we have one question left. Give us a leaderboard update. Well, Tressa, Hillary, and Corey are the only people that are technically technically no longer in the running for the win, but we've got Seth and Maggie with six points apiece. Giannis and Brody have seven. In first place, it's Randall with eight points. Randall in first place. pressure. Question 10. The topic is conservation. Mm. Mm. Feel like Nikki Haley right now. (laughs) (laughs) Does that mean you're going to drop out of the race? Is that uh, (laughs) what's going on? No, they were saying how it might be okay to be in second or third place. Uh, okay, I get you. Question 10, <laughs> the topic case. is conservation. <laughs> the Nature Conservancy and Disney collaborated for the Keep Our Oceans Amazing campaign in honor of this 2022 James Cameron sequel. Do you want the name of Now, the- you don't have to. Okay. Right, if you thought the answer was like Austin Powers, uh, Goldfinger, <laughs> you don't have to say Gold Aust- member. Gold member. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the spy who shagged me, you don't need to write down Austin Powers, okay. uh, Gold member. Because I can give you the sequel. <laughs> okay. Go for it, Randall. Just kidding. Brody, I mean, I, you know I this could, one? but I won't. Yep. Brody knows it. Uh, it's not going to be good enough, though, to catch Randall, who is ultra confident. How's it going over here, Seth? Mm. Not good. Do you know any James Cameron movies? Probably, but okay. It, um, not off the top of my head. Yanni, do you have this one right? I don't even know who James Cameron is. So. I believe so. Oh, oh, are you kidding me, <laughs> Seth? Huh, Seth? Yeah. I don't. I don't keep track of who. Now, how makes do you know the answer is not Titanic, Corey? Do I know? I see, you said you told him Titanic. Well, what if Titanic was the answer? Well, the Titanic sequel kind of happened in 2023, <laughs> Spencer. <laughs> was there one? Really? No, it's a joke. Explain, about explain the that joke, please. <laughs> it's a joke about the submersible. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Too soon. Phil's so good at picking up on jokes. Ah, I like that. That's too soon, bud. Is everybody ready? So should I put Titanic? (laughs) (laughs) Is everybody ready? That's that's an answer. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Seth saying Titanic, Corey saying Avatar, Tressa saying Jaws, Randall saying Avatar, Marge saying Avatar, Yanni saying Avatar, Hillary without an answer. Makes great sense. Brody saying Avatar. The correct answer is Avatar, the way of water. Avatar and Avatar The Way of Water both have heavy conservation and environmental themes. The Keep Our Oceans Amazing campaign focused on the preservation of 10 species that look like they belong on the fictional moon Pandora. Those species range from staghorn coral and mangroves to whale sharks and manta rays. 
Randall, well done. You win with, uh, what was it, eight, nine correct answers? Nine. Nine. Nine correct oh, answers. thank you. Which one did you miss for the perfect game? The first one. Oh, the, for, the, yeah, I should have known that as lived, a resident of Illinois for three right. years. As a regular uh, yeah. regular old White Sox fan yeah, down there. You yeah. should have known they had such a late deer opener. I, know. I would like this money to go to Coloradans for Responsible Wildlife Management. Mm. That's what I'm talking about, Randall. I... Uh, the last time I won, uh, as soon as I walked out of here, I opened up my computer and I mm-hmm. thought, there's very important things going on in the world right now. And it uh, it totally slipped my mind last time. So I made it a point okay. to remember the state of Colorado and what they're dealing with at the moment. Good thing you won uh, right now and not like three years from now. And uh, maybe they wouldn't have had those battles going. If, I, you know? if I go three years without winning... Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be two years removed from working at this company. So. Okay. <laughs> Very good. I would Randall. be too much for me to take. We have gone a long time though without overtime. Uh, I've been sitting on the same overtime questions for like a month now. So we need someone we to take a swing overtime. at it. No, let's not do that. Right. <laughs> Join us next time for more meat eater trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. <laughs> <laughs>